Hello, I'm Vishali. Today I'm here with the new topic job sequencing and operation research. This is the second video and here I'll be going to discuss the same uh, method one, the two uh, machines and n jobs form. Okay, now this is the question. The main aim is to discuss the question. In this question, the tie will occur between the jobs. Then if the time will be occur between a single job, that means with respect to machine, then how we can write them okay so now starting with the question we have seven jobs each of which has the two uh, to go through the machine m1 and m2 so machine m1 and m2 the two given machines and you have the number of the jobs you have seven number of the jobs here and processing time are given in the hours now you, the two questions we have to solve the first question is determine the sequence of these jobs first thing and that will minimize the total elapsed time then we have to find the total elapsed time okay so now let's start the question if you remember in my previous video we have discussed about the johnson's method and in the Johnson's method, I told you that first you have to find the optimal sequence and for the optimal sequence, you have to see the job which require the minimum time on the first machine and that for that you have to make the type of the boxes like this. This I have made. First step is to find the optimal sequence for n jobs and two machines problem. Now I'll be writing like this M1 and M2. Similarly M1 and M2 here. Now M1 minimum we have to write from left to right and M2 minimum hours requiring job we have to write from right to left. This I told you. There is no need to write. This you can write only for once or twice then you will be habitual of making the optimal sequence then skip this step. I will tell you why I have made the two boxes or why there will be the two sequence because here in this question there is an occurrence of a tie. Okay. Now starting with the first step is to find the optimal sequence. So we have to see the jobs then the optimal time required by the M1. So minimum time taking job is job 3. Okay. So this is the job which require the minimum time. So that means I will be writing the minimum time requiring job in first box. Okay. In the case of M1. Now for M2. The first job which require the minimum time is job 6. Will be just cross out very lightly like this because we want this for the next step as well. So is one hour. So job six require one hour. So that is the minimum time. So we will be writing it here in the left hand side. Okay. Now the next is for A. Again we have to perform the same thing. So minimum time is required by the fourth job. We will be writing it here. Now for B, again for machine 2. So alternatively we have to do one once for M1, then for M2, then for M1 and then for M2. Now for M2 is the job 7. It require the 3 hours. Okay. So we can write it here. Now for again for M1, 12, 15 and 10. So 10 is the minimum. So that means fifth job require the minimum time. That is the 10 hours so 5 I will write it here now see in the case of M2 the two jobs job 2 and job 3 require the same hours okay that means there is an occurrence of the tie tie occurs with respect to the machine M2 and under the machine M2 with respect to the jobs 2 and 3 so how to resolve it in the case of two jobs which the maximum number of the sequence we can make is 2 3 and 3 2 to process these to process mm -hmm. all the sequences here first then i'll tell you how to do so first is 2 3 i'll write 2 here then 3 here so i'll just copying all the things before writing anything First is 6, then it is, this should be 7, I have written it wrong, this is 7, okay. So 6, 7, 3 and 2. So this is the maximum number of the sequence, optimal sequence which we have to obtain. These are the number of the sequence, now we have to check for the optimal sequence for which we can perform the step number 2, okay. 
so here in the johnson's method it is mentioned if the tie is for the minimum value among the b so in our case the tie occur in the b values tie occur in the b values okay so select the job for which minimum value of a is and proceed it in the last so we got the maximum two sequence for the given question now which is the optimal sequence so you know that for which the minimum value of a is 2 that is 12 that is job 2 so you have to process it last and then there is a job 3 which take the more time with respect to 2 that you have to process it before this so this sequence is the optimal sequence okay because as we are writing the values from right to left so this value 2 and 3 this value is the optimal opti make this sequence as an optimal sequence now after this moving to the next step next step is to write the next step is to write the total elapsed time so in the total elapsed time i already told you you have to make these number of the columns for machine m1 four columns for machine m2 there are the four columns now if you want you can only write the two two columns for each time in and time out i have written this extra column processing time you have to copy from your question now first you have to write the sequence of the jobs so optimal sequence of the jobs which we have written is this one 1 4 5 3 2 i just copy it here okay then 7 6 so this is done now we have to write the processing time with respect to these jobs for machine m1 and machine m2 for machine m1 the processing time is for first one is 3 hours for four is 6 hours for fifth one fifth job is 10 hours for third is 15 hours for second job is 12 hours for seventh job is 9 hours for sixth job is 11 hours this is for machine m1 now for machine m2 the processing time for first job for first job is 8 hours for job 4 is 8 hours then for fifth job is 12 hours for job third is 10 hours job second is 10 hours job seventh is 3 hours job sixth is 1 hour okay now after this I start solving the remaining things so as machine one starts the job one so there is no idle time for job one so time in is zero at zero we starts so what is the pro total time out is 3 hours okay now for job fourth there is no idle time on the machine m1 time in is 3 hours after completion of job 1 only it starts the processing of job 4 so 6 plus 3 total time is that means at the time when it finishes its 9 okay now for fifth job there is no idle time so at 9 it finishes the work so at 9 it after 9 that means at 9 it starts the work for job fifth so 10 plus 9 is 19 hours till 19 hours it will be performing the work machine is working so there is no idle time for job 3 so at 19 it starts the work on job 2 so 19 plus 15 is 4 and 34 hours after 34 hours okay it starts the work on second much job so 34 plus 12 total time out is at total time the machine m1 is working till the job 2 is 46 okay now at 46 hour it starts the work on the job 7 there is no idle time for job 7 because it starts the work on job 7 so no idle time for machine m1 on job 7 so 46 plus 9 is 55 so at 55 this will become the time in for the job 6 so total time out for job 6 is 66 so that means at 66 machine m1 stops its work 
okay now for m2 now m2 machine the idle time for 3 hours it will be waiting as the m1 machine is performing on job 1 and we have the same sequence for both the machines so for first job till 3 hours it has done the work so for m2 this 3 is become the idle time the processing time is 8 hours for m2 machine for job 1 so time is is become the 3 hours so 8 plus 3 the total time out is 11 hours okay now if 11 is the total time out that means till 11 hours the m2 is performing the work and here m1 is free at 9 hours that means the machine m2 is not been sitting idly or it's not been waiting for the job 4 to perform directly after performing the first job it can work on job 4 i hope this is clear to you this is job 4 so 8 plus 11 is 19 19 hours it require to finish the work so uh, okay 19 hours it requires to finish the work for for job 4 job Four, four machine eight and six. Okay. Now after this, so there is no waiting time, no waiting time for the fifth job on machine M two, machine M two. So the work starts at nineteen hours itself. So at nineteen hours, what nineteen plus twelve? So it will become. Twenty one hours it require to complete the job fifth on machine M two. Okay, so now after this, this is thirty one. Sorry, thirty one. Okay, now till thirty one hours it finishes its work. The job fifth, it has to start with job third. So machine M one is doing the job three till thirty four hours. So that means it has to wait for. 3 hours if it has to wait for 3 hours that means that means the time in will become 34 34 plus the processing time is 10 hours so 44 is the time out if 44 is the time out then must it has to start the work on job 2 So M one is working still on job two till forty six hours. That means two hour is still waiting time for machine M two to start perform the job two. That means till means at forty six it has to start the work. At forty six it starts the work. So forty six plus ten is fifty six. So till fifty six hours it is performing the work. Fifty six it is time out. For the machine M two, so at fifty six it can perform the seventh job, but the machine M one is performing the job till fifty five hours. That means no idle time for machine M two. So at fifty six directly it can starts the work. Fifty six plus three is fifty nine. Okay, now at fifty nine it starts the it stops the work. Here it has to start the work job sixth. On machine M two, okay. So fifty nine it finishes, sixty six this finishes. That means how much time waiting time is there? So seven hours waiting time is for machine M two because this is greater than this. I think this concept is clear to you. If machine M one time is greater than machine M two, so that extra time will become the idle time for machine M two. Okay. So sixty six minus fifty nine is seven hours. It has to sit and wait to start the job sixth. So sixty six hour it can start the job work. That means time in will be sixty six for machine M two. Now sixty six plus one is sixty seven. So sixty seven will become the total elapsed time. This is asked in the question. determine a sequence of these jobs that will minimize the total elapsed time so total elapsed time total elapsed time for the problem 
with the help of the two machines is 67 hours it starts the work on zeroth time and it finishes the work on 67 hours this question is very important okay this has came in many of the exams like ias and btech so please carefully uh, understand and read this question and if you have any query you can post it below okay in the comment box now idle time for machine M1 this is not required in the question but then also I am explaining you so idle time for machine M1 no idle time here it has finishes the work at 66 hours so idle time for machine M1 is 66 hours this has finished the work and machine M2 finishes the work at 67. So 67 minus 66. So 1 hour is waiting for machine M1 that become the idle time for M1. Okay. Similarly, the idle time for machine M2. The idle time for machine M2 is these are the idle time these are the intermediary idle time that means the machine m2 is waiting in between the performing of the jobs that means after completion of one job it has to start the second job between it has to wait okay so that time will become idle time for machine m1 here according to the problem so 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 7 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 7 so 10 and 15 so this is 15 hours it has to wait so total idle time for problem or for the question is 1 hour for machine A plus 15 hours for machine B so it is 16 hours is the total um, idle time and 67 hours is the total elapsed time so in this question I have explained you all the things that means the optimal sequence when there is a tie number of the sequence we obtain and how we resolve the tie and next thing how we obtain the total elapsed time and the total idle time I hope my work is clear to you and you are getting benefited by it. So please like, subscribe and share my channel. Thank you.